on the turn, 400 metres to go. And the leaders now, guess what? Work round to take over from Rosa Virginia. Sir passes there, closer in Arizona Jazz. And behind them, Benzini's poking through as well. It's still Arizona Jazz. Benzini's coming after them quickly with Sir Pass. And Clasco Rock along the very inside. Benzini from last on the corner. Oh, what a ride. Benzini wins it second. Clasco Rock, Sir Pass was third. Benzini taking out the Kaimai Stakes at Matamata on the weekend for Adrian and Harry Bull and uh, Rosie Myers, the successful jockey. And Twiggy, the ride of the day, you said. Yeah, well, looked it looked like it from home and uh, and they had a ride of the day prize uh, on the day too and I think she won a saddle for that. So Yep, right, she, uh, she won a saddle. A group of supporters that go to this meeting each and every year get George Simon to choose the ride of the day and uh, she won a Zilco saddle. So. Was it? Yeah, it was outstanding, back yeah. last and... Rode them very patiently, waited, ran up behind them at about the 200 metre mark and got the splits. Would have been ugly if she didn't get the splits, but <laughs> that's why it was ride of the day. Yeah, and she's, uh, yeah, she's given them a lovely ride uh, through the middle of them. On to uh, the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Cup, I think, via the Nathans this coming Saturday. So he's, uh, he's going to get plenty of miles in his legs. He's a busy boy. And a gallop Tuesday morning. I think so, yeah. Harry was uh, indicating that he was going to come along tomorrow uh, morning for the gallop. So give him a look at Ellerslie. Um. Mm. OK, we'll talk about uh, that that to, uh, yeah. event tomorrow morning shortly. But let's go to the uh, racing desk. Steve Hunter's there. Uh, what sort of impact on the market did that win of Benzini have? Uh, Steve, good evening. Good evening, DA. Good evening, lads. Yeah, pretty, pretty big movement, Benzini. We needed a horse to put up its hand and say I'm a big challenge to some of the favourites in the Auckland Cup, which is just over a week's time. Benzini was a late nomination a couple of weeks ago. We opened it up as, as high as $21, DA. Uh, it got into about as short as 18 Saturday morning and is now into that fourth line of betting at $8 and has had some good interest in the last 24, 36 hours since winning the Kaimai Stakes on Saturday. Uh, Surpass $6 equal favourite of Rock Diva. He was good, I thought, uh, carrying 59 on Saturday, running third and behind Benzini. Probably the disappointing run of the race was Dalvin, who was backed into favourite on Saturday in the Kaimai Stakes. 51 was as short as $10 on Saturday, but has drifted to $14. So, yeah, it's starting to get a bit of shape and movement now. A bit of a final field look about it, but clearly Surpass and Rock Diva are still at that $6 top line of betting. OK, and that race, of course, just over a week away. And in less than seven days, we've got the TV3 Derby. How's that market looking? Yeah, Volstock and Barrel's been all the rage in the last seven to ten days since the Avondale Guineas. It was our favourite uh, for months on end leading into the Avondale Guineas. It's still in that second line of betting now, $3.20. But that really has attracted a lot of punters that come out of trees in the last seven to ten days and back Volstock and Barrel. He's clearly our worst result. It's been well made of that it's a six-figure loss for Volkstock and Barrel if he does, does win the Blue Ribbon event this Saturday. Mongolian Khan at $3. I think it's going to come down to draws. Uh, who starts favourite and where this market's going to finish with the top two in betting. Uh, Vava saw at that $7 frame, but probably of note in the last seven days, DA, Chanel's been the big mover. The Philly, $31 probably this time last week, now as short as $12. So she does put a bit of X factor into the race, being a Philly and... And yeah, like I say, has been pretty well supported in the last five to seven days, as short as 12. OK, anything at really long odds that you've had interest in that m might surprise you? Well, Prem has been well backed. Uh, I'm presuming they'll late nom him tomorrow, um, come Tuesday. But uh, yeah, we opened him up at $21, still a maidener, obviously, but one of the best maideners going around the country. And there's been good support for him in the last seven days, considering uh, now he's qualified for the race. And... From all accounts, he will be a late nom tomorrow, but that's probably been the best backed at longer odds, $21, Prima. Yeah, significant uh, rider change there. Of course, Mark Duplessis uh, picking up the ride. Uh, Stevie, any interest in sound proposition? Look, its win was very, very good on Karaka Million Night, and then when you do the tapes again and again, you see it making good ground in the Avondale Guineas. Uh, interest in him? It has been butch, but just the weight of money on Volkstock and Barrel and, and also Mongolian Khan, uh, meaning it's a winning result by um, sound proposition. I think that will be the case on Saturday. It will be one of uh, a lot of horses that will be running for us and the market will be dominated, particularly turnover, by the top two in the market. So, sure. look, it's not the worst, one, uh, worst uh, horse to run for us. 
Um, but yeah, it was a very good eye-catching run at sectionals in the last six, four, 200 splits. It was probably one of the best in the race in behind Volkstock and Barrel. But uh, yeah, clearly it's uh, all about two horses in the last two to three weeks. Mongolian Khan, we did have a $10,000 bet at that $5 price prior to its Avondale Guineas win. So again, that's a, an average liability to us. And then again, Mongo um, obviously Volkstock and Barrel at six-figure loss is clearly number one in liability, liability loss as well. OK, Steve, thanks very much. We'll catch you again uh, next week. Interesting to, uh, to hear that uh, most of the uh, interest in the last sort of week to 10 Cheers, days has been for Vox, Stock and Barrel, and yet they're holding up there at $3.20. It'll be interesting to see what the final field price is uh, once that field comes out on Wednesday. Uh, we touched on the, the Cup Week gallops. Uh, a good morning uh, plan tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow morning, look, I think there's about 22 horses on the list at this stage to come in, horses that are looking to race uh, during the carnival. Um, Benzini, Blizzard, uh, a couple of Auckland Cup runners, uh, Graham Sanders sending up Twyer from a TV3 uh, New Zealand derby perspective. Uh, Marky Mark's going to be there, he's unbeaten two-year-old, heading towards the Haunui Farm Diamond Stakes. And then progressive horses looking to uh, get some experience at Ellerslie. There's a few uh, that have won their only starts heading at special conditions type races, taking the opportunity to, to have a look around Ellerslie. So first of them will be on the track 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Everyone's welcome. The coffee machine will be going and hopefully there's a muffin or two there as well. <laughs> what were you going to say, Paul? You nothing, wanted to say nothing, something? Nothing. <laughs> OK. Uh, let's go back to uh, Friday and have a look at a couple of feature races there from uh, Rickerton Park. And the first we're going to have a look at here is the Open 12. This was taken out by Cope Darcy B for Matt and Michael Pittman. And uh, Matt Cameron was the successful rider. And, uh, well... Uh, was very heatily ridden over the final stages but uh, got up by the barest of margins so I think the ride probably won the race there with Cope Darcy B and of course that uh, same trainer and jockey combination were to the fore in the Open 1600 three year old filly here another Cope in the Open Mile doing a pretty good job here Butch yeah, she's done a really good job. Look, this is uh, against some seasoned older horses and had to grind out uh, a strong win, which from a uh, Oaks perspective is a good thing. Uh, she's really strong to the line. Good to see them racing back at Rickerton as well. Uh, it's been sand slip, but yeah, look, she was strong on the line as well and uh, she won't be the worst come Oaks Day. I'll tell you what, the um, field sizes, got to mention that, the field sizes, and I know it was a like a Saturday graded meeting there on the Friday, but the field sizes were outstanding. Good competitive fields in total contrast to what we've been seeing in the central districts, for example, of late, Paul. For sure. And uh, and, and very fair racing too. I thought the, the horses come from anywhere. It was good to see the track uh, play so fairly after, mm. like you say, having the sand slitting and they had the new drainage put in too. So it was good to see Rickard and playing fair and um, getting some big fields and good results. And uh, the Pittmans had a good day uh, too. Four winners there and they currently sit fifth on the Premiership. OK, to what uh, the team have learnt this week, Butch? I've learnt that the investment in the irrigation system at Matamata uh, by both the Matamata Racing Club and NZTR has been a fantastic investment. Look, it's a touch over $500,000, uh, the spend in totality, and my understanding is it's close to being a 50-50 spend. Look, you can see the green nature of the track uh, across it. Um, uh, that wasn't the case in the past. It used to be brown a long way out into the track. Uh, they were able to irrigate uh, very close to the ground. It takes out the vagaries of the wind and the the system that they've got is obviously a very, very good one. Uh, we're coming to the end of their, our natural life with our system at Ellerslie and we'll certainly be going down there and, and looking to see if we can um, uh, take a, a similar system and, and, and put it with us because uh, they've done a great job. Graham Stiles doing a great job in implementing it, but hats off to NZTR and the Matter Matter Racing Club for putting in that system. OK, Paul, what have you learnt? I've learnt this week that uh, the sprinting picking order has been sorted out in Australasia and uh, Lankan Rupee, he was outstanding on Saturday. Um, he beat horses uh, with booms on the likes of deep field, uh, obviously Brazen Bow, he's a group one winner and now is going to go to uh, to stud, but um, my word he was he was outstanding, he was a, a horse that was plagued with foot problems in the past and here he is here, Lankan Rupee, Lankan giving them a spanking. Side. Brazen Bow trying to get up on the inside. Lankan Rupee went straight past deep field. Lankan Rupee claims the lead in the final 100 metres and it's the master of sprinting. Lankan Rupee by two and a half lengths. Brazen Bow second, deep field ran third, then Waterman's Bay, Fab Favola and the quarterback.
track site has been changing in recent months, both channels are now on one digital platform, giving us the chance to enhance your viewing experience. There are new special features and a commitment to celebrating carnival coverage. Pacini's got the derby, all parceled out, thanks for coming, Pacini, brilliant at the end. Trackside 1 and 2 are broadcast in high definition with better on-screen information to assist selections for every race. There's more racing to choose from. Seven days a week, we bring you the best from home and around the world. Chris and me, turn it up, turn it up, lifting the outside, turn it up, get up. We've added new thoroughbred and greyhound programs to our stable, giving you the best of tri-code racing. Oh, what a champion, dream collector. And we're constantly exploring new technology to improve our presentation and your race day experience. So stay tuned as we keep getting better in 2015. American Ideal, sire of Besotted, Group 1 New Zealand record holder for 1,700 metres. Adore me, Elio, still there, Besotted, with a brilliant draw tonight, and he's used it to his full advantage. He's back, Besotted. Democrat Party. Democrat Party, 100 left to go. Cyclone Kate on the passing lane. Democrat Party and Cyclone Kate. And they've got to go, Cullen Young Guns final, and it's Democrat Party. Cyclone Kate second. American Ideal, standing at Woodland Stud. In second spot on the inside is Ferragamo, then Silver Chalice, Calm Harbour, wider out with Javelin. Ferragamo's coming back at Snap. Snap's still in front though, she's holding Ferragamo. And Snap, the honeymoon didn't do him any harm, did it? Beside you, to help you hurt alone, you'll soon be going up strong. Well, we touched on it last week, the uh, sad passing of Mario Sullivan and, uh, and Butch. During the week, she was farewelled at a big funeral. Yeah, she was. Look, it was uh, a big funeral in Matter Matter. It was a lovely service for a, a beautiful, graceful woman. And, uh, you know, uh, everyone, uh, the, the grandkids doing their parts in it, um, uh, the, the Henrietta, the Duchess of Bedford, her eulogy, um, the people doing the, the readings and things. It, it, was, it was a lovely service to farewell a, a beautiful woman. Yeah, and our uh, thoughts are still uh, very much with the family at this time. All right, this week's Butch's Hook. Butch. Uh, this week we're going to look at the three horse uh, race at uh, Otaki on Saturday. <sighs> look, yes there were five acceptors, there were four noms when uh, the noms came out and then uh, another one appeared that was a stable mate of the hot favourite in Vespa. Uh, there was also a horse that was in at Matter Matter as well. Well, hello New Zealand, what happened? The horse at Matter Matter stayed at Matter Matter. The uh, first starter uh, stable mate of Vespa's was scratched and we had three going around. Look, that was probably always going to happen and uh, it's just disappointing that, um, uh, that, that this race I think was continued with, with uh, the three horse race when to all intents and purposes a little bit of foresight and vision could see that was going to be the case and we just need to be careful that in situations like this that um, we don't continue to have uh, these fields held up and then uh, that opportunity um, given and then these horses uh, come out. Um, I'm not sure that um, anything was ever going to be different and, and there was always probably only going to be three runners. And this just reinforces what I said before about the uh, the lack of norms and lack of field sizes uh, in the central districts in particular. Yeah look there's plenty of options I suppose uh, between the, the CD and the North and that's possibly the difference between uh, the South Island where those options are somewhat limited and, um, and when they get a good stake uh, day. They, they need to uh, take that opportunity uh, because I heard Michael Pittman on the radio saying it was going to be four weeks between those opportunities. That's not the case in the North Island and, and there are options. It's a tough, tough time of year for horse numbers uh, and um, but I, I just think that we need to be careful about karting races that are going to end up with three horse fields. If you've got uh, something to share with us you can do so via social media, facebook.com slash show at Show on Twitter and weighin at nzracingboard.co.nz That wraps it up. Butch, uh, catch you next week. Look forward to it. Twig, nice to have you back.
Good to be back, mate. Nice and fresh, and we'll be back after the derby. Indeed. Looking forward to that. We've got a derby special to look forward to as well next week. Uh, thanks to Robbie Hannam, to Stephen Marsh and Stephen Hunt as well. We'll see you next week.